What's up, everybody? I'm blessed and free. Welcome back to another episode of DOC TV. So, man, it's kind of a different kind of interview. So when I made this channel, man, the first thing I told myself was whoever comments I'm going to reply to, I'm going to get to know all my subscribers because it's like a family, man. Like I know y'all are supporting me, so I'm supporting you. So I was reached out on one of the lives uh, by this dude right here, and we just started chopping it up, found out he's from my area. We started talking some more and I found out he has a lot of the same stories that I have like with my childhood and just growing up. So I was like, man, that's what's up, bro. Come pull up and I'm going to do an interview with you. So uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to all the other subscribers <laughs> watching. What's up, y'all? First thing I got to do, Ayo Domi. Got to do it. He's got it <laughs> stuck in my head ever since he said it. Anyways, my name's Wayne. I am live in Tampa now, but I grew up several of my teenage years in Pasco County, uh, in Hudson, Newport Ritchie, Port Ritchie. Everybody that knows me from there knows me from there. Yeah. Um, Tampa as well. You know, as a chef, I'm pretty well known here too. So originally, I'm from Baltimore. Um, I lived there until I was 14. Just another kid on the block, you know. Baltimore doesn't have gangs like most places, but it's yeah. definitely neighborhoods. If you ain't from here, don't come here. That's just the way it is. Like a turf gang type <clears> thing? <throat> totally. Like if, like I said, if you were walking through our neighborhood, the middle school for two neighborhoods was in my neighborhood. So we would beef with the kids from the other neighborhood. If you got caught over there, you might not make it back. <laughs> Damn, like, it was real <laughs> up in the Baltimore. Well, huh? it wasn't the shootings yet. The funny thing is, when I was a kid, I would hear the gunshots when I'm playing in the park. And I'm little, man. I'm thinking yeah. it's people hunting or some Elmer Fudd shit. <laughs> now that I'm an adult, there wasn't nobody hunting in Baltimore City. So, um, but yeah, it was crazy. Definitely got, you know, I was the younger kid, so I got picked on a lot, you know, yeah. so. And my was, dad, so this you is grew key. up in the hood in Baltimore? Not really. See, I grew up in what was known as the last white neighborhood in Baltimore. Okay, so, you. it's surrounded by pretty bad areas, and it gets progressively worse as you get more towards, like, where the Orioles played, you know, which was maybe a 30-minute walk from my house over there. It's real. <laughs> you get Greenmount Avenue, it's real over there. Um, yeah, so, like I said, it was more neighborhood things, neighborhood kids, because I was younger. And this is key. My dad's a Vietnam vet. So when I was a kid, little kid, he didn't want to teach me to fight. He was, like, done with fighting. He didn't want nothing to do with violence. And they were heavy in the church, so I wasn't allowed to fight, not even to defend myself. Damn, it bro. was turn the other cheek because that's what Jesus said, like that type stuff. And so that's I'm out on the end up getting your ass kicked <coughs> right constantly, dude. Yeah, bro, there was three kids up. that lived two houses down. Y'all know who you are, Brian, Tony, and John. <laughs> <laughs> so Brian was the youngest one. Me and him are the same age. Tony and John are older. So what would happen to me every day is Tony and John would chase me down and catch me. And Brian would beat me up. I was like his training because they were teaching him to fight. Man, that's so, so you were like a punching bag. Bad. Yeah, <laughs> Real bad. Bro. So, I mean, it, it got less and less as I got older and, you know, started. Once I got like 10, my dad realized that this was happening all the time. So then he's like, all right, you know, you're going to have to defend yourself. But and then he told me this is only to defend yourself. And what does he do? Teaches me the Marine Corps, like, deathly, te deadly killing people so tactics. You to kill someone? Got me arrested once <laughs> down here in Florida for knocking a kid out at Hudson Middle School. Because he taught me to choke somebody out method, but I didn't know that you could kill somebody doing that. I, yeah. And plus, we're idiot kids, man. We're doing that just for fun, choking each other out, passing out like a bunch of idiots, you know? Like, <laughs> I used to do bit that Bit the tip rolling. of my tongue off, man. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't know you could kill somebody doing that, so... Anyways, let's not jump around. So, I got beat up a lot as a kid. My dad finally teaches me to defend myself. That lightens up. I'm starting to fit in in the neighborhood. And uh, my mom had adopted a friend of mine because his mom had kicked him out. He was older. He was like 16. I was like 11 at this time. And so, he's living with me. We're doing dumb stuff, going out and breaking into cars at night. Things all kids yeah, and boys would do. Yeah, exactly. So he gets a BB gun for Christmas. We're out shooting a BB gun in the woods one day. And um, there's another group of kids, a friend of mine's little brother and his little friends. And they're like maybe 200 yards on this hill away from us. And they're talking shit to us. We're talking shit back. Next thing you know, they're throwing rocks at us. We got these BB guns. So, so pop, pop, pop. 
here's what happened. I told my older brother, I'm like, well, I call my older brother because we're like this tight. I was like, yo, give me that gun. I'm going to scare these little bastards. So I didn't know he had loaded it to shoot the cans we were shooting at. I really thought it wasn't loaded. I would have never shot this kid on purpose. So I pumped the gun up 10 times. It's one of them old school pump BB guns, yeah, handguns. Was it CO2? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, it it, it was hardcore. It stains right there, bro. Dude, <laughs> so I literally did like this and just pulled the trigger. And it hit him, and he dropped. And then he stood back up, and he's, like, holding his hands like this. He's like, you shot me, dude. And I'm like, I didn't shoot you, bro. Like, there's no way that BB made it that far. And I saw the blood start coming through his hand. Damn. I freaked out, man. Me and my older brother and our other friend, who is in the other took stories, off? booked it, man, back to the house. <laughs> my older brother's going, you get my BB gun took, and I'm going to kill you, dude. Like yeah. I'm like, man, I didn't know you loaded it, so we're arguing back and forth. I get back to the house. I stashed the BB gun in my sock drawer. Like, that's going to do something. <laughs> Ten minutes later, I hear the knock on the door, and I already knew it was the police because we lived right down the street from the police station. Ironically, where Johnny Depp shot the scene in Cry Baby where he's in the jail, that's a block away from where I grew up. Anyways, so I hear my mom go, Wayne calls my name, get up here. I come upstairs. I don't even make it because I lit, my room was in the basement. I come up the stairs. I don't even make it all the way up, and I look over, and I see the cop, and I hear, where's the fucking gun? And I'm like, oh, man, he's downstairs with the gun. I'm worried he's going to beat the shit out of me when I go grab this gun, but I have no choice. So I go down there and I take out the BB gun. He's like, I'm going to kill you when you get home. I'm like, oh, shit. So I go upstairs, give him the BB gun. They don't even handcuff me, nothing. They didn't take you in? No, they took me in. Okay, but I was 11 you. years old, bro. Like, they were, this is an 11-year-old kid. Yeah, they was, like, trying to scare you. <clears throat> well, not even. It was right down the street. Like, they were really nice to me. Like, because I told him, I was like, look, it was an accident. I swear to God, I didn't mean to shoot this yeah. kid. He was a really, really good friend of mine. Like, I've gone to amusement parks, kind of the kid that was leading me into the hoodlum lifestyle, but, like, I was up under him type shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, he looked out for me and was kind of teaching me, like, don't talk to the police. Like, I remember being 10 years old and getting that lecture from the neighborhood. You don't talk to the police. If they catch you, this is what they're going to do in the interrogations room. And everything they said came true at, at this point. So were you, like, freaking <clears throat> out? Uh, no, at the point, I didn't realize how much trouble I was really in. So you thought you were just going to get a slap on the wrist? and I thought they were going to figure out that this was an accident and everything was going to get sm smoothed away, right? Yeah. They take me to the police station. I sit there for a while, go through the booking process, fingerprints, all that good stuff. And then they tell me, they're like, hey, you're being charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, um, possession of air gun in city limits and discharge of an air gun within city limits. I'm like, okay. Still didn't realize what all that meant. I'm 11. Yeah, so <clears> I <throat> actually talk about this on my channel because I feel like, you know, something, something so small, the cops turn into something so big, and a lot of people don't understand. When you get those big charges like that on your record, even if you're not convicted of those charges, later on in life if someone wants to pull your record they're still going to see it it's even there. if you're not convicted it's so there. that really fucks your life up in the long oh, wait, run wait wait yeah four months later when i go to the meet my attorney <laughs> so fast forward four months later uh, i go to meet my attorney and we go in the room and he's not in yet so i'm being nosy me and my mother i'm being nosy and i'm le leaning over his desk and i see a red big red felony stamp on the top of these stacks of papers so i'm nosing through them like seeing who else is in trouble type shit big stack of papers all the papers that, that i go through before he comes in the room all have my name on them and I'm those like, are all your charges dude i had like eight charges at this Man, point they bammed you bro oh you don't even know the last charge they hit me with was aggravated assault and battery with intent to kill that's attempted murder bro at 11 at 11 wait it gets worse I was running with a couple of kids that were doing graffiti, like just helping them fill in paint, tagging, tagging, doing shit like that. They were, you know, help, helping me learn my tags and shit. Well, we all have our little crew was called SRK, Self Righteous Kings, and there was only like six of us, you know, a bunch of little ragtag kids whose parents yeah. weren't paying no attention to what they were doing. Doing whatever you want. Stealing our spray paint every day, living a graffiti lifestyle. I don't know if you know what that is, but there I mean, is a lifestyle to it. graffiti lifestyle. Yeah. So, you know, just hoodlum shit. You know what I'm saying? Running around the city, putting your tag up, getting drunk, chasing girls. 
shit like that. Yeah. But I'm 10, you know, 11 years old. It's not yeah, ready to do you this. You're out yet. there at 10, boy. Uh, well, I told you my mom had a real bad drug problem, so she was. All right, know? so <laughs> she was doing drugs when you were at that age. Doing no, all that? no. See, she, like I said, they were heavy into the church. My mom started doing drugs when I was like 10, going into 11. Like, I had never seen drugs, alcohol, none of that. So what had ended up happening <clears throat> with all those charges? Uh, yeah, all those charges. So they charged me with the aggravated assault and battery with the intent to kill thing. And my mom's, like, panicking at this point. At this point, her and my dad had already split up. My dad was living down here in Florida. Okay. Um, only for a couple months. Like, they had just split up, maybe six months prior. So... My mom calls my dad unbeknownst to me. I have no idea she did this. She calls him and is like, look, you got to get him out of here. He's got to go to court on Monday. I didn't know I had court, none of this. All right. Like, she's handling all of it because I'm a kid. So I'm playing out with my friends one day. Just got off of being grounded for six months, dude. Six months yeah, in my room. Me, bro. Because I got arrested, got out for after three months, and then got arrested again for shoplifting like an hour later. Man, you got some bad luck, bro. You have no <laughs> idea, up. dude. I have the luck of the Irish like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> so anyways, my dad shows up on Sunday. I'm supposed to go to my first concert. I was telling you this the other day. Yeah. It was my first concert ever. I had the tickets for like three months. My dad shows up that afternoon. I was like, you got to come with me to Florida now, you and your little brother. I'm like... What? Like, I didn't even get to say bye to none of my friends. Nothing, dude. It was in the car. So he let's came go. back from Florida up there to Drove grab up you here. and yep. come back down. Yep. All right. He didn't even have a car. He had some people that lived in a trailer park with him drive up there with him and pick up these two kids and Man. drive back in this hoopty that broke down in South Carolina. He like, wanted your ass. <laughs> he, yo, my dad's had my back as a kid my whole life. I wasn't actually his blood son. He raised me since I was All six right. months old. Like I said, he was a Marine. He had that honor about him. He he was he was the man. He was my hero. Even though he was off, like he got diagnosed yeah. with schizophrenia. I told you he was in and out of you know psychiatric ward a few times, but it was all because of what he had to go through in Vietnam. Like I couldn't imagine being seventeen in a war zone. You know, I mean. Yeah, facts, bro. So all right, you get to Florida. <laughs> What happens when you get, get to, Florida? to Florida? It's a totally different world. Like I moved from Baltimore City on Sunday afternoon blindly to a trailer park in Hudson, which you know in Hudson uh, is sticks. the sticks exactly. So <clears throat> there's a few kids in the trailer park, but they're from Tennessee or have raised been raised in Florida. I had a couple cousins in the park too. So I kind of stayed in the trailer park. I didn't really venture out too much. So you asked me, do I know this person, that person? I stayed, that's why. I stayed like in yeah. that little confined area. Um, my first day here, I don't know why I fell for this. This is the stupidest thing ever. My first day in school at Hudson Middle School, after school, these kids in my trailer park come and tell me, hey, this Mexican kid that lives on this other block is talking shit about your mom. You need to go do something about this. So, of course, I already know I got to go do something about yeah, this. Yeah, tighten him up. <laughs> well, long story short, this Mexican kid is known for weightlifting and boxing. So he tightened you up. <laughs> Dude, he beat the <laughs> shit out of me, bro. Three rounds beat me every time. Because I told you, I didn't know how to fight, fight, man. Like, I wasn't allowed to fight then, and my dad taught me, like, these grapple tactics. But you didn't know how to chunk them. I didn't know how to chuck them. So he come at me. I tried to kick him with these big-ass Doc Martin boots, and he just, bah! Oh, drop me, bro. Damn, <laughs> so that was probably the first time I ever really had been punched in my face. Like all the other them grabbing me and beating Which me up was like body even, shots. It you doesn't know? even matter how good you can <laughs> fight because if you can't take a hit. Yeah, like you know I'm I had like some shit's glass. So. I couldn't take a hit. Well, I could kind of take a hit because my dad was a little bit aggressive right. with me to you say the least got you prepared for that <laughs> yeah like that was the one downside to my dad like i said he was my hero but he was you know he had anger issues from so when you so got to florida like when did shit start going bad oh uh, i'm assuming when my mother bad. came down here everything okay. was going great for like six months man like i told you my mom had a real bad drug problem at this time she was smoking crack so i mean she's rest in peace but these stories I can tell. Yeah. So, at this time, she's smoking crack. And I had never seen drugs or nothing like that. I told you, like, big church people, 
So my dad, the first time he flipped out, which is another long story we'll get into later, the first time he went to the psychiatric ward, my mom, like, didn't know how to handle it. So she, I guess she started smoking a little weed and drinking. And yeah. that led to... Crack. Well, well, it led ultimately it led to crack, but she met this guy that she went to high school with in a bar one night, and he smoked crack. So she, long story he short, her on. he turned her on. So I didn't know any of this at the time, like... The stories that happen, like the biggest thing that I tell you said, pick a couple stories. When my mom was in this, she only smoked crack for eight months total, but she went for it like a champion at that time, <laughs> dude. Like then fast. I took. Ultimately, <laughs> the guy sold his house for forty grand, and they smoked all forty grand of that in a week. He had Damn, a heart attack. Bro. She came down here. So they were smoking lovely. Oh yeah, they must have been like I like me and my brother were already down here, so that's what got her down here. Cause she called my dad and was like, "Look, I got all this crack here. He just had a heart attack. I can't stop smoking. Like people that smoke crack out there or have no people when they got it in front of them, it's gonna they're gonna smoke it. Doesn't matter how much it is. Death, none of that. Even matters. when they run out, they'll keep smoking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or, away, or do bro. dumb shit like tell your kid if you can go find me a fifty rock, I'll let you off a of punishment." 11 years old. You going out oh, to yeah. get the 50 Rock? Dude, all day with a snow shovel. I didn't know where to get cracked, man. Like, but I told yeah. my mom I did just to get out the house. I was locked. I was in my room for six months. No TV, nothing but the bed, period. Which was probably the right punishment at the time. <clears throat> you know, like, they didn't. And I, honestly, my parents didn't know how to deal with any of the bullshit that I was bringing to the table. My yeah. mom didn't mean to get hooked on crack. Like, you know, she didn't know either. She was she naive. She was just an addict. And yeah, and it just ruined her world. And obviously, I want to have you on for part two, uh, and I think it's good to share these stories with people, especially like other subscribers and people that watch these videos, because this is a story that a lot of people can relate to. Because there's a lot of dysfunctional families that live, you know, in this country, and this shit goes on more than a lot of people even know. And I'm sure some are watching this right now and they're like, damn, he's kind of telling my story. And that's what it did for me when I first heard it. I was like, man, I can relate to this. But so what, how did you come across the YouTube genre, the prison genre and all that and find this channel? Um, obviously I was too broke to afford cable. So <laughs> YouTube was free. Uh, <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> um, but Hey, them, you boys that are doing it, man, like there, there seems to be some bread in it. Go get it, man. Yeah, like for nice. real. Um, actually, just bullshitting around on, on a phone, you know, when YouTube was getting popular. And then the first one I came across, I don't know if you want me to name shows or not. Like, you can say okay. You want. First one I came across was um, APS. Like, and I, right. I, I like Joe's story. I thought he was funny, you know, and, and I was super square, dude. Like, I, my, I had my daughter, like, I was living with my wife, like, that was, street stuff didn't interest me anymore, so I, that's why, I like, I related to Joe's story, he completely has changed his life, Yeah. you know, doesn't take prison too seriously, like, there's people out there that hate on him because they're like, oh, he's making a joke out of it, no, he just, he's doing something with it, you know, yeah. it is what it is. I mean, he's, I've, you know. he started being serious, but now, the only thing then, I like, don't agree with about making a joke of everything is that then the younger kids that are watching it think, oh, prison's yeah. just some fucking, yeah. you know, camp to go to. And I actually talked about this with Jay Williams, man, on the phone, and prison's not a fun place to be. There's nothing fun about it. No. So, but I get what you're saying. It's an entertainment thing and Exactly. Shit. How did you come across uh, DOC TV? Um, I had been watching Josh and then Josh put K Frog on. All right. And then just I guess the algorithm because I've been watching suggested them videos. suggested you and then of course I saw the eight one three. I was like, Oh, that's the homie right there. Yeah, you know how it is down here. <laughs> you know, we, we keep it tight down here. Um, so that's what made me want to support. Plus I got a lot of friends that have been to prison. Like yeah. I seem to be the only one that didn't, not because I wasn't doing the things to get me there. I just got lucky and Yeah, they spared you. <laughs> yeah. Well, they didn't spare me in the courts. I got spared by some people that really grabbed me at the right points in life and was like, Come here. Straighten your ass and up. And I was smart enough to listen. Yeah. You know, like really like I knew I was either I'm going to prison because I have nowhere to go. Like I was homeless so many times, it's ridiculous. And it was, and that's the one thing I want to tell every kid out there. If you're in a bad spot 
and somebody you trust offers to help you, take it. Yeah, fact. Just take it. Don't let your pride say no. Yeah, because that's what ends you up in a cell, your pride. That's I more than anything, about, right? Yeah, yeah, all about so that, bro. if somebody is will, willing to help you, take it. You never know where it'll take you, take it. All so, right, man, so that's what got me into you. Like, I saw your 813. I watched a couple of the videos. I was like, wow, you know, this dude's, like, really doing something for himself. And I, because I want to see my people succeed, I just, you know, I'm, that's me, man. I support my people. Oh, yeah, bro. Well, I appreciate it, man. And we'll have you back on to tell us some of your crazy stories. <laughs> uh, but I just want to thank you for coming on the channel, man. Um, if you guys haven't, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. And go ahead and drop a comment. Can you relate to this story or was your life perfect? And with that, it's DOC TV, and we're out.